Good evening and welcome to our online worship for Monday Thursday from St. James House of Prayer in Tampa. We'll begin tonight's worship with the opening acclamation for Lent. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His, His mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy on us. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy on us. Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy on us. Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy on us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose most dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is Psalm 116 verses 1 and then verses 10 to 17 found in the bulletin or on page 759 of the prayer book. We will read in unison. I love the Lord because he had heard the voice of my supplication, because he had inclined his ears to me whenever I call upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Jesus, fill us with your love, show us how to serve. 
John. Good morning to you, Lord Christ. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during the supper, the supper Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, 
You are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify in him, in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I have said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. It has been incredibly strange, even surreal, and more than a little painful, to plan and lead worship as I have this week. Holy Week and the festive celebrations of Easter Day are always an incredibly busy time in the life of a congregation. But thanks to our Book of Common Prayer and the customs each congregation develops in its history, the elements of the services, the what we do and why we do it, are pretty much set. Not so this year. Thanks to the coronavirus, practically everything is different for one simple reason. So much of our worship at Holy Week and Easter Day, even more so than usual, depends on us gathering as a community of faith. But right now we can't gather at the corner of Central and Columbus at what we call St. James House of Prayer. We couldn't form a procession around the block last Sunday, waving palms and singing. We can't engage our senses in the same ways. The sounds of water pouring at the washing of feet the gloomy reality of the stripping of the altar, the smell of Easter lilies, the taste of Easter breakfast, the feel of our joyful embraces as we celebrate the Lord's resurrection. And perhaps most sorrowing to me, we can't gather this week or many weeks now around the Lord's table to receive the blessed bread and wine, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior. Nor can we lift our voices in songs of praise and worship. And because tonight we are commemorating the institution of Holy Communion by Jesus at the Last Supper, I am going to celebrate the Eucharist at this service. However, like all of you, I will offer a prayer of spiritual communion to acknowledge our inability to gather and receive the sacrament. We learned as children that the church is not a building, it's the people, which I always assumed to mean that we could gather anywhere to worship and serve alongside each other. To be honest, I never really gave a lot of thought to the possibility of not being able to gather anywhere. I don't know about you, but I've learned a lot during this time, and I expect that I'll learn more before it's all over, so this probably won't be the last time I'll mention it to you. But I'd like to share a little of what I've learned, other than the ins and outs of Zoom meetings or how to record and process words and images, to which I and all of us owe much to Pastor Sonia, whose need to learn these skills for her school job has spilled over into our worship preparation. We call our gatherings community, coming together in unity as one body. On the night before he died, Jesus gathered in community with his closest friends and followers and gave them three instructions mandata in the Latin, from which we get the word mandate and the title Maundy Thursday. He showed them that community is built on humility, the willingness to set aside our egos and positions in order to serve others, especially the ones he called the least of these. He showed them that community is built on simple acts like sharing bread and a cup, singing hymns and spending time together, and he told them that community has a cost, that there are forces and people whose actions, whether intentionally or not, drive people apart rather than together. Later that night and over the following days, they would see this placed out, played out in the most awful way they could imagine. The arrest, trial, torture, and agonizing death of the one they knew as Lord and teacher. 
Only then would they understand his broadening of the rule of love your neighbor as yourself to the new commandment he gave, love one another as I have loved you. We're experiencing this inability to gather because loving one another at this time means doing our part to keep others safe, particularly those who are the most vulnerable to the effects of COVID-19 as it spreads. But the virus isn't the only thing spreading, at least not if we're faithful. Community can also spread. Servanthood can spread, even if it takes different forms. Reaching out to others, especially those who are alone or who don't enjoy the benefits of technology, those who have lost their sources of income, those who are suffering from any illness, and those who are exhausted from the efforts to combat the virus and its current and future effects, there are many whom we can serve and many ways to do it. Simple acts of kindness can spread and are often the most appreciated. And love, love which goes beyond our comfort zone, can spread. By God's grace, we will soon regain our ability to gather safely for worship, fellowship, and serving alongside each other. But in the meantime, we can live in the power of the Spirit who unites us across distance and across time, giving thanks that our Lord Jesus has brought us union with God and each other and following his call to love and service. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Father. 
close with the anthems after foot washing, beginning on page 274 in the prayer book or in your bulletin. The Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, Do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done to you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Peace this is, is my, my last, last gift to you. My, my own, own peace I now leave, leave with, with you. you. Peace this which the world cannot give, I give, give to you. you. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Peace, peace is my, my last, last gift, gift to you. My own, own peace I now I leave, leave with you. you. Peace, peace which, which the world cannot give, I give, give to you. By this shall the world know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. Power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father through Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. On this night, Jesus washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us and humble us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, hear us and unite us. On this night, he prayed for those who were to believe through his disciples' message. We pray for the mission of your church and for those to be baptized during Easter tide. Lord, hear us and renew our zeal. On this night, he commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and the unloved. Lord, hear us and fill us with your love to share. On this night, he reminded his disciples that if the world hated them, did him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith and for our enemies. Lord, hear us and give us your peace. On this night, he accepted the cup of suffering and death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us and welcome all your children into paradise. Let us pray together. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from your table. But you, O oh Lord, are the God of our salvation and you share the bread with sinners. Cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. At this time, it is the offertory, a link is now available on our website should you like to give your offering in that manner. The offertory sentence is this, I appeal to you, my brothers and sisters, through the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Thank you. 
take our hearts. We love you, take our lives. Oh, Father, we are yours. We are yours. Your holy people standing washed in your blood. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of power and might, might heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will, will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. At this time, since we are unable to gather around the Lord's table and receive communion physically, let us say together the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We continue with the post-communion prayer of thanksgiving in the bulletin or on page 365 in the prayer book. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, Father, you have, you have graciously, graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Savior Jesus Christ, Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the conclusion of the Monday Thursday service, were we together in the church, you would see the clergy and lay ministers stripping the altar of all of its appointments leaving it bare. In this place, we will also strip the altar, and if you have had a sacred space at home, I invite you to use this time, as we hear part of Psalm 22, to strip away the parts of your own sacred space and leave them bare. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads saying, he trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You are my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. 